Hi, this is Patrick Mayock with HotelNewsNow.com. I'm joined at the International Hotel Investment Forum in Berlin with James Chappell, Managing Director of STR Global. James, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate Absolutely. It. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Um, you are the numbers guy, so to get things started, I'm going to ask you from a performance stance mm -hmm. perspective, where is the industry right now? Uh, not great, um, which I don't think will come as a surprise to anybody. I think what has been a surprise, though, is if you looked at the numbers maybe five or six months ago, you had a very clear differentiation between various markets. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the business cycle running around about sort of between eight to ten years, um, and you looked at the US and Europe as being pretty much in the same cycle or the same part of the cycle, so we would be in years eight or nine of a ten year cycle, for, for example, and they were following, as they have done for many years, very much on a, on a similar trend. Mm -hmm. And then you looked at Asia Pacific and Middle East and Africa, they were still very much on an upward trend. Asia Pacific at a different place in its cycle, so maybe year four and five, still growing very, very much. Um, uh, Middle East and Africa slightly different. Middle East definitely running on an entirely different economic model, so a self-sustained growth, if you like, of a growth mm -hmm. period. Um, but really what has happened since, if I can call it the second global financial crisis, because I mean the real credit, well, the, the original credit crunch happened in June 2007, so mm -hmm. it's kind of been like a sort of slow motion collapse since then. What's happened really since the second one, which happened in October last year, is that the effect of the sort of globalized banking industry has really moved very, very quickly across the world and, and people and especially commercial travelers have really stopped, stopped traveling mm -hmm. in essence. And so what's happened is, is that those two global regions that weren't uh, on the downturn part of the cycle have actually been pushed down to join the US and, and Europe now. So what you actually have is you have all four major regions in the world going into negative territory. Um, in terms of growth of RevPAR growth, in terms of demand and all of those things. So really what we've done is we've managed to stimulate really a, a, a depression where in certain areas of the globe, it, you know, the actual opposite was happening up until, you know, October last year. Now, obviously, you know, the entire mm. global hotel industry is feeling the effects, but are any industry or any regions being hit particularly hard and then are some kind of faring a little bit better than others? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think if you look at the data, not surprisingly, those slightly more developed markets, which are quite brand heavy, mm -hmm. tend to fare a little bit better. I think that's for two reasons. Firstly, it's because those kind of markets tend to be uh, very commercial driven, world center kind of markets that, you know, people might not be traveling or, or uh, internationally, but certainly domestically, they'll be traveling and they tend to be hub destinations. And they generally always hold up better in that, in that, um, in that part of the cycle anyway. And mm -hmm. I think the other thing is, is that their levels of revenue management and their ability to maybe hold the rate and to maximize the revenue is, is better than in other regions. So specifically, if you look at Europe as a whole, for example, typically Northern Europe, so I would include Scandinavia and the UK, and that is holding up better than Southern Europe. So Spain, Portugal, Italy, those countries that have less branded room supply, that have less visibility on data and have less revenue management skills. Um, Eastern Europe as well is falling, but Eastern Europe in terms of actual number of hotels and bedroom stock is so far behind what we have in, in Western and Southern Europe um, that it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But basically you can split Europe north and south mm -hmm. with the south is having a, a, a lot harder time of it than the north of Europe. Um, you mentioned that some of the more brand-heavy markets, yep. a bit more sophisticated, have mm -hmm. an easier time holding their rates. Yes. And obviously the ability to hold your rate is so key. Mm -hmm. Is the industry as a whole doing that? Um, no. No, it's okay. not. Traditionally, the industry, when it's gone into downturns, has um, relied on pricing, really, to differentiate their product from themselves and other hotels. And, and in the upturn in the cycle, what you can do, because the demand is greater than the supply, is you can manipulate your customer's behavior through price to a certain extent. So those days of the week, depending on the style of hotel, that you're not perhaps as busy as others. So a, you know, a traditional urban hotel like this one will be very busy on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe not so busy at the weekend, but they're able to use rate to stimulate demand into the business. Now, in the downturn of the cycle, because the demand isn't there, they're not able to influence the consumer behavior in, in the same way, but they're still trying. So the skills that made them successful in the upturn of the cycle are actually hurting them now as we go to the downturn of the cycle. And really what you end up doing is you end up doubling up on the pain. So you're losing occupancy because demand is down anyway. And then you drop your rate to try and stimulate a latent demand that isn't there in the marketplace. So you lose both rate and occupancy. So in effect, you double up on the problem. And unfortunately, that is what we are starting to see across Europe, even in those areas where, where the markets are generally holding up better, 
um, you have a lot more independent hotels in Europe than you do have in the US. And so what you have is you have a lot of people looking at these forward-looking rate scraping tools, which have a snapshot of, of competitor performance. And unfortunately, with most of those tools, what they then do is they discount. And once one person starts, then the others follow, and it's very, very difficult to pull back from that. So unfortunately, having held rate pretty well until the end of last year, we're now actually starting to see both falling occupancy and falling rate. When can we expect kind of an upswing out of this? Because of the severity of the financial crisis and the effect that that's had on the business, it's very difficult to call. Um, if you put me on the spot and said, you know, you absolutely have to say when it would be, I, would, I suspect it's going to be towards the end of 010. I suspect that uh, maybe Q2 and 3 010 we'll see a slowing in the growth, and then maybe right at the end of 2010 we'll start seeing a growth in RevPar again. And is that just for Europe or globally? That would be for Europe. I think the US, if you look at the figures coming out of SCR, it's actually predicted to come out a little bit earlier than that, which I think would make sense because their cycle is maybe six or eight months ahead of our cycle. Okay. Um, and just kind of to close, are there any other noticeable trends or things that you're seeing in the numbers that our viewers should be aware of? I think one important trend that I've seen here is that people aren't doing budgets anymore. They're not doing forecasts because there's no point. There's no point in doing a year-on-year -year budget because the first eight months of 2008 were terrific. So there's no comparison. It's really market share. and People need to focus on market share. And I think that 2009 and 2010 is not about making more money than your competitive set, it's about losing less. Mm -hmm. And I think the quicker that hotels accept that and work within those market share parameters, I think the more likely they are to, uh, to be able to stave off the, the worst of this particular downturn. Okay. Uh, with that, I just want to thank you for joining us, James. It was Absolutely. a real My pleasure. pleasure. Thank, thank you, Patrick. You.